500 events and raised $300,000 for charity. Would you please, massive round of applause for our guest speaker, artist Sarah Rowan. Thank you. Oh yeah, how are you all doing today? Wow, you don't often get alcohol when you first walk into an event and have that kind of response. How are you all doing today? Yeah. All right, come on, sound guys, help me out with some tunes. sailing around Antarctica. <laughs> Next time you're stuck in traffic, just keep that in mind. Goodness gracious, trying to get someplace in a boat like that through that storm. Good, goodness gracious, Lisa. It's amazing. Now, when I paint live, guess what? I make sure I've never tried it before. So I'm scared shitless every time I flip it over to see if it actually worked. And then I spend the rest of the keynote kind of fixing it up to that. Oh, almost there, almost there. It helps to have a little, little dot there. Now, we need wisdom in what we do, right? We need some wisdom, just like, tell me, you can tell what that is back there. Can you, because sometimes when you're right up on something, you can't see what it looks like, and then you step back, and you're like, oh. When you're right up on your problems, you kind of need to take a step back, right? Does it look like an owl? <laughs> Let me scare you for a minute. All right. I come from a holler back church, okay? I'm from South Carolina. Now, if you don't know what that means, that means I do better if you're laughing at me or with me. I don't care. Just some feedback and I am all in, right? Awesome. Now, I am no Einstein, but I have noticed that there are some trends happening in the world today. And one of those trends is everyone's really fucking tired. <laughs> I like being an artist because I can say whatever I want on stage. <laughs> now, raise your hand if you're tired. Tired. Try saying it like a southern. Tired. You don't just, leave. it's kind of like really lazy Australian. You're just kind of like tired. I'm tired. Your cup is empty. I know, right? Profound art right here. <laughs> I want it to be doable. I want you to feel like you can do it too. Be like, yeah, I can do that. That's what I want. I'm not here to impress you at all. I'm here to inspire you. Now, when I was about 18, one of my mentors, you had lots of them being in the South. They all wanted to get you on the straight and narrow, right? One of them came up to me and said, Sarah, there are deep wells within you, so you're going to have to know how to refill them so you can nourish the people that come to you for help. And when you're 18, that's a, like a really deep statement, right? But over the past 30 years almost, okay, I barely passed math. I'm 42, just work it out. It's like, oh my God, when people come to me, if I have not refilled my cup and I'm tired, what do they get? They don't get the best of me. They get cranky, ornery, Sarah or mama or whatever I am, whatever hat I'm wearing to that person. And I've discovered over the past year and a half how to keep that cup full. You, you want to know what that secret is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you don't want to just be tired. You want to live your best, most awesome life. So I, I read about this metaphor. It, Okay, to be honest, I, I heard about it in a podcast and pretended I read the book. I'm a little bit ADHD there. <laughs> Anybody else like that? I bought the book and then it took me about nine months to get to page 26 where that metaphor is mentioned. But get this, this metaphor could change your life and if you've got friends or family you want to share it with, write it down. This is brilliant. Your brain can only retain about three pieces of information today, so when you're about the sixth speaker, you're screwed. <laughs> so write this down. When you're born... You're born a castle with a thousand rooms, 
And in each and every one of those rooms, there's a gift waiting just for you. You're not scared. There's no judgment. There's no shame. You're like two years old. You're running through your castle going, oh, my God, look at this. And you're just opening all these doors. And you're like, joy. Wow, that's cool. Curiosity, creativity, anger. You open all these doors like, wow, this is awesome. And then your parents come up to you and go, oh, we don't really use that room over here. And you go, oh, really? And, and poof, close it shut. And then your friends go, oh, <laughs> that room's really silly. You should shut that door. And with shame, go, poof, close it. Lock it up. Don't look at it again. And then your aunts and your uncles and your grandparents and society, spiritual leaders, whatever it is, they come up to you, they're like, shut the door. Shut, 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 shut. And by the time we reach adulthood, we believe we are nothing more than a mere two-bedroom apartment that needs work. <laughs> Anybody else can relate to that? And if you're not raising your hand, you are a liar. <laughs> we, do, we do it. We shut the doors because we're full of shame. I shut doors. I shut them till the point it almost killed me. I was raised in the buckle of the Bible belt. This. I came to Australia to go to Bible school. I survived 20 years of conversion therapy. I did the thing what I was told to do. Marry the man that you will be attracted to. Just believe, believe, believe. It almost killed me. And I've only been living free and happy for two years. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! It's awesome. And now that my cup is full, I'm no longer standing on stage feeling like a fraud. I used to stand on stage trying to inspire people while being a complete fake. And as you, if, you, if you've probably heard the quote, probably not, Simon Sinek, if you're one person at home and another at work, one place of those are a liar. I was a liar. And I found a way to refill my cup was by opening those bloody doors. They're just waiting there. And I used to think it was going to be really hard. You know, you got to either get a bottle of tequila or some sage. I don't know what. You just got to go through and you got to open them up or maybe $20,000 of psychotherapy, or magic mushrooms, I don't know, whatever is floats your boat, open those doors because your life will be richer and fuller from it. And if you wanna think about it this way, here's another picture for you that I came up with on myself. All right, ready? Actually, it's better if I do it with some, get some longer lines, here we go. Ready? Okay, if you're Monday, Looks like your Tuesday, looks like your Wednesday. You know, you put your clothes on with the exact same leg first. Do you know that by the age of 35, that we are all zombies? That's what the, the medical science people say. Okay, they say that we are all living in our subconscious. 95% of our life is in the subconscious. You brush the teeth the same way, you do everything the same way, and you wonder why you're so bored and angry. Wednesday, let me guess how you sign your email. Kind regards? <laughs> I try to spice it up a little bit and be like, have a creative day. Whoop, whoop. I just like trying to make sure I didn't write my girlfriend right before, otherwise it's like, X, X. Sorry. Um, Thursday, Friday, you're getting the picture right. Now, if you were to walk into a hospital and you see this line across the screen, is that a good sign or a bad sign? <laughs> it means it's over. <laughs> but what are we living? We are literally Monday through Friday, and usually our weekends too, dragging our coffin. <laughs> <laughs> because every day is the same day. You only remember the days that are unique, like today. When you checked Sarah Rowan on your form. <laughs> of course, with Marty. <laughs> you remember the days that are different, the days that are fun. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be bungee jumping or skydiving. I've done both, and guess what? Skydiving is less scary. You can make it fun. You can make it interesting. Now, one of the ways you can make it interesting is actually just trying the thing that I mentioned earlier, putting on your pants with your opposite leg first. Be curious. 
do not sue me when you almost fall over. I'm not kidding. It's actually kind of hard. There are so much parts of our life that we actually just think are mundane and boring. I have a friend that when she sends her receipts to her accountant to take care of it, it is like the most boring part of her job. So you know what she does? She does funky selfies with it. She takes photos with the dog or the dog shit with the, the receipt because it's interesting. <laughs> it's different. And then guess what? The accountant, that it, that's normally the boring part of their day. They're like, the dog had its fiber today. Like, it's great. It kept it all interesting. It kept it alive. So refill your cup. I have to keep mine full. I not know how to keep it full. I do my garden and I get massages. They're so bloody expensive, both of those things. I've spent like $500 in the past two weeks just on my beautiful garden. But God, it's really pretty. Until my cat decided it was her new litter box. And then five hours yesterday I spent putting a net around it. But I got there. So if you remember anything that I've said today, I want you to remember that you are a castle. I want you to write down a door that you want to open when you get home. Whether it's with sage or tequila, your choice. For every follower on Instagram, I give a dollar to charity, and if you don't have Instagram, it's okay. You're just old. <laughs> I appreciate your time. I'd really love to inspire any and every event possible. Uh, my heart is to raise a million dollars for charity, and I really, really am grateful for this opportunity. Thank you, Michael and Marty. Round of applause for the lovely Sarah Rowan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>